17P deletions in patients that have not been treated are not very common, about less than 10% of patients at the time of their diagnosis or at the time of their first treatment will have a 17P deletion detected. However, we know from multiple studies that this incidence increases by line of therapy, that is, for patients that have had treatment before, and especially for patients that are refractory to chemotherapy, especially fludarabine, the incidence of finding 17P deletion or TP53 mutations goes up substantially to almost 40 or 50 percent of patients. Again, that's why it's important not only to be thinking about testing for FISH at first diagnosis, but also for patients who have relapse disease if they didn't have the deletion at the start of first treatment to check for it when they relapse as it might change your focus and how you recommend management for the patient. Deletion of 17P historically has been the strongest prognostic marker because patients had a shorter time to treatment, a shorter duration of response to therapy, and historically also a shortened overall survival. The reason I mention historically is a lot of the studies that looked at progression-free survival and overall survival were in the era of chemoimmunotherapy. Now in the era of some of the novel targeted drugs such as abrutinib or venetoclax, we're seeing a uh, substantial improvement to patients' duration of response to their first treatment uh, as well as their survival. The IGHV mutation status is a very important prognostic marker for patients with CLL. In the front line or prior to patients receiving first treatment, about half of patients have an unmutated, which is considered the higher risk uh, situation and about half of patients have a mutated IGHV. The unmutated IGHV predicts that patients are more, much more likely to require treatment, have a shorter time to that first treatment, and have a shorter response to therapy no matter the response they achieve to that frontline chemotherapy. That is, even for patients that achieve a complete response at the end of their chemotherapy, if they have an unmutated IGHV, they have a shorter duration of response to that treatment. Though I mentioned that about half of patients at diagnosis or before first treatment have unmutated IGHV and half have mutated, this actually varies by the FISH uh, status. That is, for patients with the higher risk deletion or the high risk deletion 17P, many of those patients, the overwhelming majority, are expected to have an unmutated IGHV. These, these prognostic markers tend to group together. For patients with deletion of 17P or TP53 mutation, we don't recommend chemotherapy-based regimens. And again, the reason for that is we expect uh, attenuated response and a shortened response to that type of drug. And there's also concern that exposure to chemotherapy for patients with TP53 dysfunction could lead to clonal evolution. Therefore, our frontline treatment options for patients with deletion of 17P really focus on the non-chemotherapy approaches. That involves uh, currently now um, approved uh, abrutinib frontline or other approaches such as high-dose steroids and rituximab, so combining the immunotherapy but avoiding chemotherapy. This patient was enrolled on a clinical trial and treated with abrutinib 420 milligrams daily, which is the standard starting dose for CLL patients. The rationale for using abrutinib is that it works for, by mechanisms independent of having an intact TP53 function. That is, for patients with deletion 17P or TP53 mutations, we're concerned that standard chemotherapy wouldn't achieve the responses we want or the duration of response. Therefore, the rationale for choosing abrutinib is that, especially for older patients, we know that in the first-line treatment, front-line treatment, that it's generally well-tolerated, and it achieves particularly good responses in areas of bulky disease, such as the lymph nodes or spleen, which was her primary area where she was having symptoms.